So it's that time of year when many a tech fan will start obsessing over one thing in particular. Should I ditch my old telly box and get something even bigger and shinier? And basically between Black Friday and the Christmas sales you've got a crap ton of choice. But if you're also a Sky TV fan, then you've now got an added complication in the shape of Sky Glass. This beastly box can pump brain candy at your face without the need for a satellite dish, complete with all the usual tools including smart voice search and the option to stream to other TVs in your homestead. So I've been personally testing out Sky Glass in my home for over a month now to see if it really is worth that upgrade. So here's my early review of Sky Glass and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So like most tellies, Sky Glass can either sit on a flat surface or be mounted on a wall using the convenient built-in mountain bracket. No extra accessories are necessary. Just make sure you've got plenty of space because the smallest size of Sky Glass is 43 inches with 55 and a mighty 65 inch also available. This right here is the 55 inch model and it's certainly more than big enough for my dinky little living room. The good news is there's no extra complications when you're deciding which size of Skyglass TV to go for because you'll get the exact same feature set, the exact same experience with all three. Now all three models of Skyglass are a bit on the chunky side compared with some of the latest size zero panels but it is still a neat and tidy design with a choice of five different colours to blend in with pretty much any home decor. The bezels surrounding that screen are reasonably slender, except for down below of course where you have a proper monster of a soundbar covered in acoustic mesh. Meanwhile the frame itself is anodized aluminium and it is a proper heavy bugger. My 55 inch weighed in at a whopping 28 kilos. Ladies. And the main selling point with Sky Glass is the fact that you can stream all your content over the internet, you don't have to rely on a clunky old dish nailed to the outside of your homestead and that includes not only all of Sky's channels but also all the most popular streaming services like Netflix, Disney Plus, yada yada, can all come straight to your TV without the need to hook up more clunky boxes or other devices. You basically just plug the telly in, connect it to your home internet and away you go. You can hook up to your home Wi-Fi network in just a couple of minutes as long as it's up to snuff for streaming a good bit of Ultra HD content of course. Otherwise Skyglass also has a LAN port around back as well for getting a wide connection direct into your router as long as of course you're putting your TV next to your router otherwise that's going to get a bit awkward. Of course you may also have games consoles and other devices that you would like to hook up to your telly for which Skyglass serves up a trio of HDMI 2.1 ports as well as a USB port to power smaller devices like a Roku stick. You do have EOC support via HDMI as well if you want to hug up a surround sound system or some other audio paraphernalia but with Skyglass this really isn't necessary, more on that in a bit. Unfortunately however Skyglass is not capable of displaying 4K content above 60 frames per second unlike rival telly sets from the likes of LG so if you do have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X you're going to have to think long and hard about how much you really want that Ultra HD 120Hz experience. Personally I would have preferred another HDMI port if only because I test a lot of smart streaming devices and other techie shiz but 3 is a decent number. Especially considering you've essentially freed up an HDMI port by no longer having to attach a sky box. Oh and apparently Skyglass is the world's first completely carbon neutral telly free of single use plastics and packaged in a fully recyclable bubble, bubble, bubble box although the energy rating of this thing ain't exactly a passing grade. Ouchies. Now every Skyglass telly comes bundled with the new remote control which in a neat little touch actually matches the colour of your TV. It's not too dissimilar from the old Sky Q effort and it's reasonably easy to get to grips with. The main buttons that you'll find yourself poking a lot are conveniently highlighted with a coloured border. And those are the home button, the voice search and the add to watch list feature. You can press and hold that search button at any point to find whatever you need on Skyglass. Otherwise, the telly also supports hands-free voice search and just like uh, smart speakers such as Amazon's Alexa devices. Just say hello Sky and your telly will immediately start listening in. And Skyglass can also automatically turn itself on when it detects you coming into the room, although this is quite irritating when you don't actually want to watch anything. Thankfully you can knock that feature the ruddy heck off if you really don't want it that's precisely what I did just a couple of days after getting Sky Glass. There's also a mic mute button on the side of the TV if you decide you really don't want your telly listening into all those juicy hot conversations you're having. I've got to say though I love the voice search on Sky Glass. It works an absolute treat to the point where I basically relied on it for absolutely everything and I barely even touched this thing. Sky Glass can hunt across over a hundred channels as well as your favourite apps to find what you need in a 
jiffy. So if you're after a specific show or a movie, you don't have to trawl through all of the streaming services trying to find the bugger. Otherwise, if you're not really sure what you want to watch, we can perform a more vague search just for a particular genre, for instance. Otherwise, you can go off Sky's own personalised recommendations based on content that you've previously consumed. The only problem with personalised recommendations being that, of course, you don't have separate profiles set up for you and the rest of your family, so basically my personalised recommendations are mostly slushy rom-coms and kiddie crap, with the occasional bit of ultra-violent anime or horrifically gory explicit banned horror shiz mixed in. Otherwise you can just go for my own favourite option, which is a game of cat butt roulette. And that's where you let your cat knock about or sit on the remote and then you watch whatever channel their fuzzy arse selects for you. Now the Sky Glass UI has changed up a fair bit compared with the old Sky Q effort, but it is still a feature-packed affair as usual, giving you fast access to all of your streaming services, including Netflix, Disney+, all that good stuff. I would have preferred a dedicated section for your other devices connected by HDMI though. Especially as turning on a console or another device connected via HDMI to Skyglass doesn't ever seem to automatically then switch to that input. That TV guide is, as always, separated into separate sections so you can quickly skip to what you need and you can browse up to a week ahead to find good stuff to record. Or rather, not record, actually, because one of the main problems of the Skyglass TV is the fact you've got no internal storage in this thing. So no longer can you build up a collection of every Blake 7 episode ever made over a matter of months known full while you'll never actually get around to watching them or digitally record Lord of the Rings just in case you ever get nostalgic for that time in your life when Kate Blanchett or Orlando Bloom dressed up as an elf made you feel all funny in your trouserial department. Instead, what you do now is add shows or movies to your watch list, at which point they're available to stream over the internet as long as it doesn't infringe on any licensing shenanigans. This means that stuff you add to the watch list may disappear appear pretty soon after they're added before you even get a chance to enjoy them, which is a serious bugger. And let me just give you a quick example of one way that the watch list feature isn't as good as just being able to record stuff. So with my old SkyQ box, I'd occasionally set it up to record episodes of All Elite Wrestling late at night on ITV, with the plan being that if I had a spare 20 minutes at some point, maybe I'd stick it on and I'd just quickly fast forward to, you know, the actual match parts of it. you skip through all the sodden adverts as well, because ITV, oh my god, so many ads. However, with Sky Glass, all that the TV is doing is then linking you through to the content on ITV Hub, the app. And thankfully for the first year that you own Skyglass, you can actually skip through the ads on the likes of ITV Hub, but it's so much slower, it tops off at six times speed, so it still takes a while to get through all those many, many very long ad breaks. And apparently once the first 12 months of your Skyglass ownership has elapsed, you'll then have to pay five quid a month in order to keep on skipping through all of the adverts on your saved content. And that's nothing new, you know, ITV Hub already charges a small amount each month in order to do the exact same thing, but it is just more money out of the beer fund, which is a serious kick in the cock. So if you're definitely a fan of storing things up to watch at some later point when you happen to be on holiday or something like that, then Skyglass probably ain't gonna be the one for you. And this whole issue isn't the only thing that I've got to piss and mourn about when it comes to Skyglass as well. When I first started testing the telly, I found that quite often my live content would suddenly just freeze for absolutely no reason. My internet connection was still absolutely fine at the time. I wasn't pushing it, you know, with other devices. I would then have to swap channel and come back to it and then that, usually that would sort of kick it up the arse and get it to, uh, to resume. Uh, but thankfully, touch words, uh, following an update that Sky pushed out to the Glass TV, that doesn't seem to be happening anymore. So touch word, fingers crossed, that's all dealt with. Now the actual display here on Skyglass is a quantum dot QLED panel. And if you've got no idea what QLED is, no worries. I've done a handy explainer video right here on Techspert. I'll try and remember to stick one of those linky things up above my baldy head. So go check that out uh, after you've watched the whole of this video, of course, because otherwise it f***s up my algorithms. And this is a 4K screen, of course, to make the most of those Ultra HD sports offerings, the 4K films on Sky Netflix, etc. And the detail on offer here is certainly strong. Futty in particular looks bloody marvellous with smooth motion at the HD and Ultra HD levels. You've also got 10-bit HDR support with Dolby Vision compatibility, although that screen is noticeably darker than many rivals from the likes of Sony and LG, even when you knock off the auto brightness. You don't get the same super deep blacks as you would from an OLED telly either, but overall for the price it is not a bad picture. The only real issue I had was an odd flickering when watching some Sky content like Billions, for instance, which was very distracting indeed. But again, following that update that I mentioned earlier, that seems touch wood to have been sorted out. 
But as well as the excellent voice search functionality, one of the undoubted highlights of Skyglass is that audio output, which is absolutely ruddy marvellous. Not too surprising given the tech packed into this thing. You've got a built-in subwoofer and, as well as the soundbar down below, Sky has slapped extra speakers around the edges, given a grand total of six outputs. This serves up 360 degree audio experiences with full Dolby Atmos support, the next best thing to actually having a dedicated surround sound setup in your front room. And this definitely worked a treat in my small living room. It really did sound like things were happening around me at times at the point where it actually kind of distracted me because I thought like my cat was mewing trying to get in. No, it was just something happening on the TV. And of course, I can't vouch for how well this surround sound effect would work in larger living spaces. You might lose some of that surround sound effect, unfortunately, but certainly for my dinky little living room, perfect. Now, if you're a Sky Q user, you'll probably be used to having a Sky on multiple TVs dotted around your homestead, your kids' rooms, etc., etc. Don't worry, you don't lose out on that in Sky Glass. You don't have to buy a different Sky Glass telly for every room in your house. Instead, all you need is one of these wee blighters right here, known as a Sky Stream Puck. It just plugs straight into any available HDMI slot in any of your TVs that you've got scattered around the home, and that will allow you to stream your Sky content direct from your Sky Glass TV to your other tellies. The two communicate over your home Wi-Fi, so again, you'll need to make sure you've got a strong signal wherever your other telly is sat and you get all the functionality, including the excellent voice search smarts. It's only a handful of the tools like the automatic voice uh, search recognition, for instance, that isn't supported here on the Sky Stream Puck. And I love how absolutely dinky this thing is, certainly compared with the old Sky Q mini boxes. Certainly very discreet. And around back, you do actually get a LAN port as well as an aerial port as well, if you wanted to uh, get a wired connection on the go instead. So anyway, that's my full frank final review of Sky Glass after using it here in my home for just over a month. And I've got to say, a few teething issues aside, it is pretty damn good. The only thing that really puts me off recommending it is the whole watch list feature. The fact that you can't just record stuff, just fill a box full of crap to then watch when you're ill or you happen to have a few days off. Especially infuriating if you're used to, you know, taping a whole load of crap off the likes of the horror channel or whatever uh, to then watch it some later date and then you come back and you just find that none of it is actually there. But the actual telly itself is nice and affordable considering you get a respectable QLED picture, you get some fantastic audio output on this thing and it is really nice and convenient being able to stream absolutely everything without having to stick a whole bunch of extra boxes and devices into the back of it. So what do you guys reckon? Have you been using Skyglass? Are you tempted by Skyglass? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers everyone. Love you.